Bienvenue à tous, welcome to reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, we trace the footsteps of a citizen journalist assassinated because he exposed the truth. Rafael Moreno wouldn't take no for an answer when he started asking questions about corruption and a mining project in his part of Colombia. His thirst for truth brought in many death threats, but it was a hired hitman who claimed his life before he could pass on vital, incriminating evidence. Some 30 journalists led by Forbidden Stories, have joined forces to continue Rafael Moreno's investigation. Among them, a team from France 24 with our correspondent in Colombia, Pascal Mariani, all committed to the same philosophy. You may kill the messenger, but you can't kill the message. This report then, in the name of Rafael Moreno and what he lived and died for, the truth. Nine days after this call, Rafael Moreno was murdered in the restaurant he had just opened to earn a living. He is survived by four young children and his widow, Chiara. His family worries the crime will go unpunished, as it often does in Colombia. His friends saw him as a people's journalist. His Facebook page, Voices of Cordoba, was followed by more than 50,000. Hola, ¿qué tal, amigos? De Voces de Córdoba, bienvenidos a una transmisión más con su amigo y servidor Rafael Moreno. Nos encontramos en este momento en la entrada principal de la mina de Sator. Yo, Rafael Moreno, critico a las empresas basado en investigaciones, en trabajo de campo y en entrevistas a las comunidades. Este fue el cráter que dejó el atentado realizado a la policía. Rafael Moreno presented himself as the defender of the resources of his region. From the corruption of politicians to the pollution and abuses of mining companies, he denounced cases where the losers are always the poorest. It's a curse to live in a territory as rich as Cordoba. It's a curse to have so much vegetation, to have so much water, and also to have coal, gold and copper. For simple people, ordinary people, it's a curse. This is one of the company's cars. A US-based multinational has obtained the mining concession for a large portion of the region. Hola. The company plans to dig an open-pit copper mine here. As their mining operations take place in our village, they drive by every day. 
300 families live from artisanal gold panning around the El Alacran mine. They have been living there for half a century and will soon be expelled from the area. Rafael Moreno knew this community of gold miners well, where his father once worked. <laughs> he often visited them and relayed their struggle against the mining company. Rafael was from here. He grew up here on this land. From one moment to the next, we started to see him streaming information from his phone. And everyone knows that here in Colombia, talking about anything puts you at risk. He attacks so many issues, denounced so many things, that today we don't know who killed him. The reason is clear. He was a person who made the invisible visible. Allá en la vereda del alacrán, donde antes se respiraba paz, hoy se respira zozobra y miedo. Allá ya se acabó la tranquilidad. Like much of Colombia, the southern region of Cordoba is plagued by multiple conflicts. On this day, demonstrators protest against the destruction of illegal gold mining dredges along the rivers by the government. The dredges are believed to belong to the Gulf clan, the powerful cartel in the region. The authorities accuse the armed group of organizing protests by miners, led by these hooded men. aquí eh, transmitiendo en vivo para Organic Noticias. En estos momentos acaban de atravesar una mula para impedir el acceso de tanto de motocicletas como de vehículos. Organis Cuadrado worked frequently alongside Rafael Moreno. Just like him, he spreads the news from the region via social media. Bueno, los que puedan ahí dar estrellitas para ayudar esta transmisión pueden colaborar ahí con la causa. <laughs> Vamos a cortar la transmisión porque allá veo que vienen encapuchados con, con palo, entonces es mejor evitar en temas de seguridad. The journalist lives under heavy protection. After Moreno's murder, the Colombian government gave him two bodyguards and an armored car. The two men sometimes investigated corruption cases together. For example, they're going to pay the roads, and the contract is for one million euros. So they do it with poor quality materials. They invest 400,000 euros and steal the other 600,000. Sometimes they don't even do the work. They take a picture somewhere else and pretend it's been done. That's how it works. Among other investigations, Rafael Moreno paid close attention to the construction of the municipal stadium in Puerto Libertador. The work, launched by the city council in 2018, was left unfinished. He renamed it the Eternity Stadium. Estamos nuevamente visitando el Estadio La Eternidad y hemos encontrado una cantidad de cosas nuevas, pero no buenas, horribles. Vea, me tocó venirme para la eternidad en botique caucho. Repito, queridos amigos, es un proyecto que lleva aproximadamente 7 mil millones de pesos invertidos. In Colombia, public contracts are published by law on the internet. The reporter checked those in his region and compared them with reality. ¿A usted le parece, queridos ciudadanos de Montelíbano, que un hospital como el hospital de Montelíbano se gasta 136 millones de pesos en cafetería? La historia que yo quiero contarles de un gran muchacho que nació en esta región. Su nombre Rafa con cariño le decían el defensor de los recursos de la región. In Puerto Libertador, the story goes that the streets around his family home were left unpaved in retaliation for his work. I've kept a pair of Rafa's shoes, and when they pave it, I'll put them on and walk on this road, in his honor.
The threats were constant, sometimes even against me. Once he received a message on his phone saying that they knew where I worked and which school our son attended. He was investigating all over the region and exposing several issues, let's say political mafias in the area. And we were afraid, very afraid for him. Rafael Moreno did not tell his relatives the details of his investigations, so as not to put them at any more risk. When he started doing this, nobody in the family agreed. Absolutely nobody. When he was alive, they did him a lot of harm, too much harm, to the point of using armed groups against him. How many times my brother had to meet with the armed groups to justify himself because the order had already been given to stop him. Rafael couldn't go to the nightclub because some thugs came to beat him up. And it happened several times. Este panfleto me lo mandaron hace poco. Dice que intimidándome, diciéndome que parcero, usted se cree el putica porque habla en público y por eso cree que es intocable. Y en el, en el papel que le meten a la vaina me mandan esto. En el papel me mandan esto. En Colombia, corruption and violence often go hand in hand. In Córdoba, the assassination of Rafael Moreno has silenced the few who speak out. Ya son las 11 de la mañana, 15 minutos, 11, 15 minutos. Aquí estamos compartiendo buena música a través de la Piragua Estéreo. We don't know whether it was a company who had him killed or if it's a political killing. We investigated both politics and companies. A legal source tells him about the progress of the investigation. The organization is how the Gulf clan is referred to in Córdoba. They arrested someone who ended up speaking. He says that it wasn't the organization himself, but that someone paid a member of the organization to kill him. Someone paid. It's terrible. The Gulf clan, which calls itself the Gaitanist Self-Defense Forces, or AGC, is the main drug cartel in Colombia. It has an army of gunmen and takes its share of all lucrative activities, from mines to government contracts. Cordoba is one of their strongholds. Nothing moves there without their approval. This video from a surveillance camera recorded the hitman. The man enters the room where the journalist is sitting alone in Monte Lebano. He fires a few shots and leaves. Y si me van a matar, matenme. Pero les digo de frente, no me van a silenciar. Rafael Moreno's voice has died out, but his reports live on. Cuando se me olvida el tono en donde estaba y de donde sigo, me compongo, me compongo y lo desolvío. A report by Pascal Mariani in Colombia and Forbidden Stories in the name of Rafael Moreno and what he lived and died for, getting to the truth. We're committed to that here at France 24. Thanks for watching. Stay with us.